Oh, All right. right. Man. Welcome to the Domestic Draft Podcast. I'm Evan Bierman here with Dan Sloak. Dan, yeah, kick us off. What are you drinking today, man? Guava Guava. It's a uh, it's a wheat beer. It's a guava uh, hefeweizen. So obviously something that I really am going to enjoy already. If you've been listening, it's one of my favorite styles of beer. Add in Hef. a nice kind of guava taste for a summer beer refreshing like today. And it's out of Laguna Beach Beer Company. So I think, I don't know, if you're around our age, Laguna, you think of reality TV shows growing up is probably where you know of Laguna before, Laguna Beach, just south of LA. I actually looked up the brewery because I was curious how far it is from where I'm at in San Diego, and it's about an hour and 20 minute drive, so not too far, just right up the coast uh, going north. Uh, But really, this brewery, it started in 2018, two friends. A lot of these stories we've been talking about, a lot of them are, you know, friends, talking about opening up a brewery, becoming home brewers. Um, the two friends in this story is Mike Lombardo and Brent Re- uh, Reynard. Uh, Brent went to business school, opened up his own business following business school, but continued to homebrew and then just thought it made all the sense in the world. Why not have my next thing be open up a brewery? So in 2018, open up a brewery. And by 2020, they have three tap rooms. Um, they're kind of, you know, they're Laguna residents born and raised there. So they really enjoy the community giving back. They do a lot of events there. So really good beer too. Really good summer, summer, everything about this can speaks summer. It's got flamingos, guava, um, some nice fauna on there, uh, showing the Southern California flora and fauna on the can, Evan. What about you? What are you drinking? It reminds me of a 450 North can kind of. Um, so I have Hopewell Brewing Company is the brewery that I'm doing today. The beer is called Outside Voice. Hopewell is actually uh, really close to me. It's in Logan Square, Chicago. So Outside Voice is a session IPA. It's 4.8%, so pretty low for an IPA. 3.67 on untapped. And it's really good. It's a really smooth uh, drinking beer, but you know it is lighter. It's 4.8%, so it's not very hoppy. Uh, it's just something I feel like you crush a few of these. But I'll tell you a little bit more about Hopewell. They're um, all originally from Chicago. The founders, Samantha, Stephen, and Jonathan, met while they were attending uh, University of Illinois in Champaign. So U of I. It wasn't until after graduation, though, they took a long road trip out west, touring the region's many breweries that their bond strengthened and a grand plan emerged. They were going to open a brewery of their own. And then it took about eight years of planning. So pretty long for them to come Mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, where Hopewell eventually landed in Logan Square. And it opened in Chicago in 2016. If you know anything about Chicago in 2016, it actually holds an extra special place in my heart because that's when I got married, but the Cubs won the World Series that year. That's right. So that's a big year for uh, Chicago baseball. And speaking of baseball, that's going to bring me to our next guest. It's Nick Pollock. He's the founder of Pitcher List and 2022 Fantasy Sports Writer Association Baseball Writer of the Year. You can find him on Twitter at Pitcher List. Nick, thanks so much for joining us. What is happening? No, thank you guys for having me. Uh, and uh, I have something. I don't normally drink. Can I, can I, I haven't even opened it here. Here you go. There it oh, is. I love that's it. A, that's a beautiful sound. Good old PBR. That was PBR. You said the, the party favorite, fridge. right? Oh yeah, yeah, of course. I won't have uh, Coors Light or whatever and stuff. No, no, no. It's just award-winning beer. Yeah, every Award, can. Yeah, apparently, every that's, can's that's got the, the ribbon. ribbon after all, right? So, <laughs> but yeah, no, really. Yeah. Thanks, guys, uh, for me bringing me on here and excited to talk about Cubs baseball. Yeah, of course. Before we started recording, we were talking kind of about our past being former athletes. And um, I'm sure that kind of led you down this road and kind of curious of how that and the idea. So how that impacted you uh, creating Pitcher List and also just the idea of creating kind of this uh, all encompassing source for people to go and get information on on all types of pitching. Yeah, it just kind of happened over time. Uh, I'm really, really fortunate in the in many ways. One of them is uh, that I had a job uh, working from home where I ex- essentially conditioned them to only expect like 30 minutes to an hour of work every day <laughs> and over like four years. And uh, I always, you know, I played baseball in college, I actually moved away from it, was into music and everything for a while. And then uh, I learned how to build WordPress sites with that company. So it becomes 2014 where I didn't feel like I needed to make a side hustle. I just I had what I was you know, already going um, or making at that job. And I, I, I realized that I was tech savvy. I knew how to make gifts. I knew how to make a website, but I also was a huge fantasy baseball nerd, loved Razzball. And I, mm-hmm. and I realized that 
I could make a GIF database really easily of every single pitcher in the majors. I could make a GIF of them and just go like, hey, Justin Verlander's page, here's his four-seamer, here's his curveball, his slider, his changeup. Like, there it is. Nothing like that was on the internet now. And now we're completely spoiled with baseball savant videos and pitching ninja and Mm -hmm. just so many ways for us to visualize a pitcher. But back then, it was just Fangraphs' spreadsheet. And it bothered me because I had my Fangraphs uh, enlightenment in 2011. Um, after all my friends kept beating me in fancy baseball and they never played baseball that made no sense to me <laughs> and i understood what they were doing i was like okay but i still felt there was something missing right like i uh, us familiar with the sport we can watch a guy and understand their potential quicker we can understand if they deserve the success that they had easier than just uh just the numbers always tell us right so i mean the eye test so i wanted to create that that was really cool mlb shut that down <laughs> hmm. And then I, uh, but I really enjoyed just like covering starting pitching and it just, how long did it take before time. they, before oh, they shut it down? Three yeah. What, did you got like I a cease and desist? I like, Oh yeah. I launched it in uh, February of 2014. I actually had a co-partner at first. And then uh, we uh, like the weekend before we were going to launch, I realized he did none of his work. He was supposed to do half of the gifts. So I did all of them in one week that he was supposed to do for three months. Cause I was just like, I'm going to get this done. And uh, it took me three months. I did a, uh, a, a an article about Jose Fernandez. Um, he had, at that point, just had Tommy John, or at least was gonna, uh, it was like the day that we found out that he was gonna get Tommy John 2014. The next morning, I put a compilation of the best, 20 best pitches he's thrown in the first you know year plus of his, of his career. And it was so great. And then Fish Stripes featured it. It was in other places, I was so excited. And then it'll be some of season assist. I was like, well, this is, but that's oh, always oh, like man. a that's a that's a sign you're doing something. Yeah, at least yeah. it got like, the attention well, right? of them. The, it's like, but they were yeah. like accusing me of doing the broadcast and video and audio. And I'm like, I'm doing three second gifts. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it, it was ridiculous. But I enjoyed the writing so much, and I enjoyed writing about starting pitching finally. And it just kind of then turned into pitch list the next year in 2015. And since then, I've just found so many incredible people uh, that have just like, oh, cool, we'll add that little thing and add that little thing. And, you know, something like this is not built overnight. It's not built by one person. I say oftentimes Pitchless is built by strangers. It's built so many people I never knew who have come in and done amazing things. I mean, we have this amazing graphics team, for example. We have developers and database uh, engineers and amazing minds that have helped me create some incredible statistics. Alex Fast just sent me an email in 2016, starry-eyed kid who was doing uh, a master's in um, computer engineering a little bit and was an actor and everything. I was like, all right, whatever, man. <laughs> and look at him now. Like he's making gifts for Sunday night baseball. Like what? Uh, it's kind of wild. And uh, it's really just a, such a product of everybody who's come in here. And meanwhile, I just still only talk about starting pitching. I don't want to do anything else. So uh, it, it's really been a fun ride and it's just kind of nuts what we've become. And we have so much more. No want. more uh, cease and desist from the MLB? No more cease and desist. We did get suspended <laughs> from Twitter, or should I call it X now? I don't know. Oh, uh, back in 2000, <laughs> I think it was 2017. Um, but that was actually because of Fox. We put out like gifts as it was happening of the World Series in Game uh, 1. And the whispers I heard was that Fox was so upset that the ratings were so far down that they went the next day and just sent all these cease and desists on Twitter. And they suspended us for four hours. And that wasn't fun. Terrible time. Jeez. That's it. I've been good since. Jeez. Well, I mean, you're coming up on, you know, close to a decade here with Pitcher List. Um, for somebody that hasn't been to the site, what kind of information could fantasy baseball uh, managers or just baseball fans in general find there that they can't find anywhere else? Whatever you want. We've got it. <laughs> we got Go it. to the site. No, Check I it mean, out. um, yeah, there, there's so much. I mean, we have a whole podcast network. We do a daily show. I do one, and there's also the generic one. I do one about pitching. Like, there's someone else that does one about all the news and everything. Um, do we have weekly shows about everything else from long ball legacies, just talking about the legacies of former players, which is so great. Um, we we have episodes where we talk directly to pitchers, um, as well, and of course, just every other thing about fantasy baseball. But I think the real thing that um, is getting more attention these days, and I really want it to be, is our player pages are so unique, um, very different than any others that you'll find. Uh, Fangraphs has their stuff. We have more intricate pitch data. We showcase the gifts, so we're allowed to do that now, which is great. Um, but all these different stats showcasing it that really give you a better understanding of what the player does and it's all stack cast data we are i think the only one 
you'll find that actually has licensed StatCast data across the site. Um, so, I mean, there's just so much. We do like 10 to 15 articles every single day. Uh, it's, it's, and uh, it's incredible what this staff does. I just do like three of them. Um, and <laughs> they do such an amazing job. You were saying, uh, to just go back really quick, that you you, you talk to current players, current pitchers, uh, and bring them on to some of your shows. Um, any Anybody worth a note that's coming on? I mean, or... James since I own, we, uh, in 2020, yeah. uh, we started a relationship with him uh, when he was recovering from Tommy John. Uh, we saw him in, uh, in February. It was, <laughs> I remember it so distinctly. It was like a Friday in February. Maybe it was even like the leap day where there I was at the stadium we were about to go to the conference of first pitch florida and we decided to go to an orioles a pirates game and spring training were three games three rows behind uh the first base dugout we just had this incredible discussion with james and time we brought him like the best coffee if you want to meet james and time if you ever do you have coffee? to bring him the best coffee he's a coffee so i'm sure nuts. him and ian happ are pretty pretty yeah. good friends with yeah, actually coffee. yes uh I think they are yeah um i ought to also bring up DD with him because i know that he and trevor williams played it together and i D is such a fun thing but anyway uh there was, it was like the perfect moment of like i have a beer it's like one o'clock on a friday and like what is my life i'm like this is going to be the best year ever february 2020 um but yeah. <laughs> I, but yeah so we've been we've been very fortunate though to talk to james and ty on a good amount uh since which, which i certainly thought about with uh you know coming on to this cubs one and it's so good by the way to see that sweeper finally working yeah um, he's kind of turning around here lately huh it it was something that uh, i i i kind of figured like for for example i remember actually one moment talking to him about sliders like two years ago um with the yankees and being like man like i i just feel like you need that slider that you used to have in 2017 that you had with the pirates uh and just kind of turned on and everything and it's like I, I hope like you know are you what are you doing to work on your side it's like literally right now i'm sitting next to garrett cole as he shows me his i'm like okay good that, i hope yeah. that works <laughs> like I, good luck you know he's the nicest guy um but yeah i mean we've been really fortunate to to be in touch with a lot of guys um pablo lopez is another one um that we talked to a ton um and uh it, it's wild and we have lots of plans to actually um that will incorporate it even more because i feel especially with the way the internet works and media works now, like there's so much more opportunity than you used to be like to be, talk to a, a player was so difficult. Yeah. Like you just, 10 years it ago. seems like the players too are, are kind of like seeking out uh, opportunities Absolutely. and more outlets uh, these days, because I think they're well aware that it's a, a non-desirable like sport for marketing. So they're taking it upon themselves to go out and find these like outlets and pitcher list or partner up with you know connect roasters like Ian Happ I mean, and just find these kind of avenues to go and and, and show themselves to the world gone to the point yet where like a player is like oh hey pitcher list I want to go talk with you we gotta we gotta go to them first but I uh, you know it's it's interesting too I think a lot of players recognize especially if like you're a rookie or so you're excited to be in you know in the majors and you kind of want to take part in that um and you know it might be harder for like veterans i remember one time we tried to like talk to lance lynn and lance lynn was just like no you know he gave <laughs> us like one word answers for stuff like okay we're not gonna it's, yeah. it's fine enjoy your day lance it's, mm -hmm. it's that doesn't surprise me yeah but it, i mean not why. saying he's like bad or anything he was just like not it was not the time not what sure. he wanted to do I'm like, mm -hmm. fine. um but i but yeah i think especially with younger players too they understand how social media works they understand uh you know how much what it's like to be more present Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you'll find that if you reach out to, to, to younger players more often, they'll be very receptive to it. I also love D and D, by the way. But uh, yeah, that's another so conversation. Yeah. <laughs> um, we've had uh, we've had Lance Brozdowski on the show, and we talked oh, to him great. about spin spin rate. He's great. Um, but you know, spin rate's one thing. It was something that I you know I've never really paid attention to until we had talked to him. Now, something I've seen on your site, I've seen pitch level value, I've seen called strikes plus whiffs, just some different metrics that I haven't seen before. Are these, these are proprietary? These are something that you guys came up with? Or yes. is that, okay. So like, yeah, the, tell me about how that, like, what is that process like to create absolutely. a metric like that? And oh, how long did that take to come up with those? Are there guys, more? Do you guys play music at all? No. No. Not at all? No, okay, never mind. I wish. I, I, I picked up the guitar a long time ago. And for the me, recorder was... in fifth grade. <laughs> Yeah, right. Isn't that the most obnoxious <laughs> thing that schools have ever done to parents? Yeah. Uh, it's mm -hmm. just, come on. Like, really? It's got to be a recorder, <laughs> that thing? Um, but, I, you know, when it comes to music for me, when I picked up the guitar the first time, it was about doing something new, right? It's, it's 
for, I've always enjoyed kind of the creation process and just saying, okay, cool. We have tools. Let's actually like do something with it as opposed to replication. Right. And uh, what's really fascinating to me is I didn't think at all that I could in any way uh, come up with anything uh, inside. Of it. I just assumed that either like in the private side, there are just so many more, more smarter people than I am and everything. Right. And if Moneyball has showed us anything, it's that organizations kind of don't really care as much as we think they do. I mean, they do now more so, but there's still a lot of opportunity in the field. And I honestly, what happened was it was 2017. Baseball Savant has this amazing game feed that allows you, as the games are going on, to see what pitches are thrown and what there's, you know, what happens with them, what, if they're swinging strikes, if they're called strikes. And as I do my article every night, which is I go over every single pitcher every single night. It's how I get any sort of knowledge for the game. It's like, that's my homework. Uh, as I did that, I would be like, cool, let me see on Savant how these pitches performed. And I found that, you know, at the time we were all like, swing strike is all that matters. Um, but the nights that these guys that would have normally super high swing strike rates, they didn't when it was, oh, they just got a lot of called strikes. This night. I can't really like harm them for that. The guys just didn't swing and you know, there were strikes. Like that's still good. It's the same thing. So I actually started combining them. And I said, all right, like it was a 30% CSW. That's fine. And I realized that like around 30% was when it was generally a good start. If it was underneath that, then it was, it was kind of bad. And I kind of just didn't really think much about it. And I was like, oh, that's a cool thing. And it was the off season of 2019 that Alex Fast came to me. So like, Nick, you keep talking about CSW. Like no one else is doing that. I think it's really great. Like, can we do something about it? And I was like, I don't have time. Write something. So he wrote, he wrote an article about it. Um, and that won the FSA, FSWA research are the article of the year and now actually that stat is like used by organizations and on fan graphs and stuff and that blows That's my awesome. mind it, it, it blows my mind i didn't do anything special I, I literally just like used the thing that was there and i assumed someone else had already done this you know like it wasn't me being mm -hmm. like i'm gonna go there i'm gonna have my mixing pot and i'm gonna come up with a new stat it was just like oh all right there there's that thing mm -hmm. um but what it did is it did say like oh wait like no one was doing that what else are they not doing, you know? Right. And it really yeah. opens the door to like, what kind of conversations can we have and, have and how can we think about um, everything that goes on with every single pitch? There's so many variables. And if we just start assigning new ones to things, what happens? So uh, there have been so many other ones that haven't been published. I mean, there's one that I call plus percentage, which is actually on our site, which is just when he throws a pitch, is it something good for them? That is, is it a CSW that's called strike or a whiff? Or is it also a foul ball? Or was it a, an out in play? So if you have like a high plus percent, if you have a 100% plus percentage, that is like the greatest pitch in the world, right? Um, if you have a 0%, mm -hmm. like why would you ever throw that? Mm -hmm. uh, so you can actually see um, really quickly, like season to season, say like, is this pitch better for him? You'll instantly just see if it goes from like a 58% to a 67% or something. Like clearly that's a really good pitch for him now, right? Uh, and you quickly will be able to get that. And we have percentiles and averages on our player pages. So you have the reference point if you don't know what's that, which is really cool. And no That's one else wild. has. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, so, so stuff like that, you just can, there's, it really should be no barrier, I guess, for anyone to come up with a stat. Come up with one. That's great. Now, the actual process of proving that it's good is much harder. You got to run a lot of correlation models and be like, okay, year to year um, uh, correlations and compare it to the current ones like K minus walk rate is just like amazing, right? Sierra is amazing. Um, and is it better for us to use swing strike rate or that thing or whatever it is, right? You have to showcase that it's actually valuable in some way. Um, that's the, usually the hard part. Um, when it comes to PLV, uh, PLV is something that I always it's like a product of something that bothered me forever. Um, which is that, you know, PVAL? Do you guys know that one? Mm -mm. No. Um, <laughs> so I, uh, back in like- I'm Currently two, like I, five and seven in my fantasy baseball league. I'm not <laughs> very good. <laughs> it's all right. No, 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 you understand. That's that's most people. I would say like 98%, 99% of people yeah. don't know, like inside the world of fantasy baseball don't know this. I don't know why I said 98. It's 99. Um, so, Eno Saris was, is, is my hero, my, my idol and my, and the legend inside the industry. And he really showed me the ways of understanding pitch level data. So like in 2015, 2016, I was reading obviously tons of fan graphs and Eno and everything. And I discovered that on, uh, on fan graphs, as I suppress a cough very poorly, um, <laughs> that they have pitch FX there. They're like they have pitch FX, which we don't use anymore. That's like, pre stack cast stuff essentially um but that was what we had for like pitch tracking data for for a while and <laughs> see i tried and i uh, 
that actually had like swing strike rates by pitch type. It had actual zone rates by pitch type instead of overall, which is like, whoa, this is great. <laughs> we know that like if a guy throws a slider, if the slider is good and he throws it more, that's much better analysis than just like overall, oh, his swing strike rate went up. I don't know if there's a reason for that, right? Mm-hmm. And this like just blew my mind, you know, how like <laughs> that is how it should be done. And how I do analysis, which I think is I think is more unique than the general fantasy analyst, is I'm so about understand the repertoire of the pitcher, understand what they are doing and how they're getting their success. And if mm-hmm. they adjust it, is that going to change it? What is the new thing? What does the new thing do? Is that getting him whiffs? Is that getting him called strikes? Should it continue to get him called strikes? Should it get him outs? If you actually understand each piece of what they do, then you can actually say, this is sustainable. This isn't. This has room to grow. This is squeezing the most out of it, et cetera, right? So I was blown away by that. And they have mm. a stat called P-Val. The P-Val sucks. So... <laughs> P-Val is pitch value. It essentially just says, based on the result of this pitch, we're going to give it a positive mm-hmm. or a negative value, right? And it's saying, oh, this is a good pitch because it has like a high positive number. Oh, this is a bad pitch because it okay. has, high, has a low negative number, right? And why does that suck? Because it's totally about the result and the context. If you allow a home run with the bases empty or a home run in bases loaded, it's going to say the bases loaded one was a worse pitch. What? Yeah. It's same the same pitch. pitch. If, same if he throws the same exact pitch twice and one is a swing strike and the other is a home run, mm-hmm. it, they're going to treat it at different scores. And that's, that's so stupid. That's so dumb. That's not the actual quality of the pitch, right? It's not the actual value of it. So I was on a mission. I've been on this mission since like 2018 or something like that to make a, an actual pitch quantifying stat that is an all-encompassing, this was a good pitch or not. And finally, okay. we got to a point that we felt good about it this year to put it out. I'm very excited for what we're doing for 2024 to really improve upon. Pretty much the 2.0 version of that is going to be way better. But what's really strong about this, I'm sorry that I'm rambling for so long. No, 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 you're good. On a tangent that is just yeah. my most, the most fun thing ever this in. Uh, yeah. is pitch level value. And you think about it and it says, you think of like the timeline of an at-bat, right? It's, or like, sorry, a, a single pitch. A pitch is thrown and the batter does something and then either contact is made or not. And if contact is made, then there was, it was a result, or sorry, if contact is made, then there's an exit velocity and, uh, and a launch angle. And then there's a result, right? And so what we've done as analysts is pretty much ignored the pitch thrown, ignored the batter does something, and instead assigned all of those things to the, to the exit velocity, right? I mean, instead of even saying the result, which is what we initially did, we then went one step back to know there's exit velocity and there's launch angle. But we had two variables in there we couldn't define. And because we have X and a Y, we can't determine X or Y. However, if we're able to say, hey, that was a pitch quality of 10 out of 10, and then the batter does something, now we can assign a value to what the batter did. That is totally different. That is like an actual difference between, like, if I throw a pitch up there, he's going to have a high exit velocity. Of course it is. I can't really give the hitter that much of a value to that. But if I go up there and throw 110 miles per hour, of course he's not going to hit that one. I'm not mm-hmm. giving the hitter anything there. We just we know that. But if it, there's a variable of like how good the pitch was, then we can actually assess how good the batter was or bad they were to get the exit velocity and launch angle that they do. And that Man. to me, yeah, you're really breaking it down. Yeah, oh, I know. That like have you, you ever had like a a, a a franchise like come out to you and like hey like this these We've... statistics and data you're creating <laughs> we would love to use them solely for our organization only. Well, so when it comes to PLD, or trademarking I... those, like can't you like so, so, trademark okay, first this? First and foremost, CSW and also really just baseball stats as it as it works. I think um, especially one that doesn't require a model. PLV requires a model because we're modeling all the characteristics of the pitch, right? And that's a black box. And that, that always kind of messes people up. Having a black box, we don't really see what goes into it. It's always going to become come with a little bit of squinty eye. I'm like, I don't know, skepticism, right? But CSW to me is like, that isn't mine. That is baseball stat because it's just, it's there already. It's, it's uh, called strikes, it's whiffs over total pitches, nothing more. And that kind of stuff, like, there's a reason why WOBA isn't uh, trademarked or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, it's... Baseball to me is not about patenting stats about it. It's about actually sharing that knowledge. And for me to be able to say like, yeah, I'm the one that came up with that thing is great and cool. And to be the one proprietor for it initially or whatever it is, awesome. 
Um, but also keep in mind, most organizations, not the Rockies and others, <laughs> uh, have these pitch quantifiers already. They have their own versions of this stuff. Um, now, if they're going the same way that we are, I don't know. Um, I've had some conversations. I've had conversations with Driveline, for example, um, about they have their own you know, pitch quantifier and applications and stuff like that. Uh, we talked to them about this one. They gave some really great feedback. They were very excited about ours. There's some cool things we're doing with it. That's a little bit different than they are. Um, it's always just great to have these other models out there to like see what works, right? Um, but for us, it's so fun for me because I can actually just say like, yeah, Kyle Brash's slider is like one of the best sliders. I can just instantly say his PLV is a 97th percentile among all sliders and starting pitchers. And that's awesome. I was like, whoa, I didn't realize that. And you know, I see these other things about it, but I didn't realize it was just that good. Hmm. um and what about cubs pitchers yeah <laughs> who, who's who on the cubs is doing something that's because we have kyle yeah. hendricks who is like not a power arm at all and a finesse pitcher is that something you're more intrigued in or is it someone who's got you know higher spin rate and, and is able to do crazy <laughs> things mean, with the baseball so, so spin rate to me um i think a lot of guys talking about spin rate and stuff will be the first one to tell you that like i don't think anyone really will tell you I like a guy because he has a 3000 RPM on his curveball or that he has mm -hmm. a 2600 RPM on his fastball or something. Um, it's more of like, okay, is he getting active spin on it? I mean, you could say like, oh, he's getting terrible active spin, which is essentially just saying like, is the spin of the ball going the direction of the pitch? Uh, so like active spin on a four seam, you want to be in the same over the top thing. Um, if it's tilted at all, that means that essentially the direction the spin is indicating is, is, opposite or at least not an opposite but uh counteracting the direction you want it to go which is not ideal right essentially you're not getting as much consistent movement on it that would then miss a bat or so so i uh, induced vertical break is like the thing really to me it's like all right is he getting a lot of induced vertical break that would indicate that this should get whiffs if you throw it upstairs or not or like mm -hmm. is it getting a lot of induced drop and not everything like that right i mean those are the major things induced horizontal break to me actually kind of sucks but that's me. I think horizontal pitches are much worse than vertical pitches um, because as a hitter, uh, you know, Evan, a lot easier for you to extend your bat out than it is to adjust it up or down. Mm -hmm. Right. No, like, that does make sense. Yeah. It, it's just I, not, it's just how it is. Mm. Uh, and I, yeah. I look, I hit my senior year of, of high school. I batted fifth. Okay. I wasn't terrible. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't hit at all freshman, sophomore, junior year, but I hit, in, in in senior year and i remember so many times just like adjusting outward as yeah. opposed to up, up yeah taking it the other way yeah or like going it's down definitely and easier. changing that way tougher so right uh i'm generally of like the only times i care about horizontal break is a sinker and if it's and and he needs to be throwing it inside to the same handedness and that's like the only time you want to see a sinker in my view um unless you're like marcus stroman you're like yeah sure i'll have a 60 percent ground ball right in front of one of the best infield defenses i'm like well that's a good match yeah stroman's yeah. been fantastic and so i yeah. guess that brings us to a question about him like do you anticipate they trade him yeah why not? um is he why just been too him? good to you know to get rid of do they hold on to him i guess he's well, a little bit maybe you're alluding to right he's he's, he's as good this year because of his defense yeah i think i think honestly it is a major part it's a uh, that's a problem to me for trading Strowman is that if you want to trade him, great. You better have a good infield defense, right? If you trade him to a bad infield defense, it's like, you're not going to like it. <laughs> you're going to have a bad time. Look, it's a 249 that's a Babbitt time. on his sinker right now. Right. And think about that for a second. You guys know this when it comes to Babbitt, generally mm -hmm. the low Babbitt's are reserved for fly ball pitches because fly balls, um, they either leave the yard first of all. So that's not even included in Babbitt. And then they mm -hmm. are easier, they, they land for more outs than they do extra base hits or so, right? But grounders, much higher chance. That's why everyone was like, when we were kids, oh, you're going chopping the ball down. Yeah, you know, ground balls is what you want. Yeah. Is, <laughs> I can't believe that we lived before the fly ball revolution. How, how <laughs> was I... I don't know. I feel like I was little league uh, coaches are lo were losing their minds when they first heard that, that everyone's just trying to hit a home run now, I think. And there's still like, two oh, just trying to I be think. really good. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What happened to the t chopping the ax, right? Yeah. Hitting the grounder. <laughs> yeah. The, the thing is the craziest video I've ever seen is Christian Yelich with Barry Bonds and how Barry Bonds was like, you have to ultra chop to hit fly balls. And uh, it's how you get like the backspin on it and everything. And that's how you uh -huh. do it. And that's what made Christian Yelich like a 40 home run hitter all of a sudden. And I just go back to, it's like, 
you don't want to chop unless you chop or something. It's like there's right. some like middle ground in between of how you do the approach that is just bad and then the other ones. Um, but anyway, right. So Babip should be way higher for Strowman uh, on, on his sinker. I mean, in previous years, we've seen like 300s before 2022 um, consistently on that pitch. And this has been the pitch, right, for, for Strowman through the years. And it was 257 last year, 249. Um, this year and I think that's a huge reason why the averages on that pitch from being 300 in previous seasons is that was 237 to 219 so I know that seems like here I am talking about all these amazing pitch metrics and everything like that I'm talking about BABIP and I'm talking about average but honestly that is the world of, of Stroman that is what he elects to do so often um, and so yeah, is that the gonna is good but lower you know, his is that going to lower his value? I guess yeah, to other I don't teams. Know. Let's say there's another team. I, I that legitimately don't depends know if an organization's looking at it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's how I would do it. Right. You know. Mm-hmm. But Are there, I mean, so we've all yeah. seen moves that we think like, oh yeah, but no organizations they know better. Here's the funny thing too. You should think about there are only thirty organizations, right? Yeah. Like that job that you have is is kind of like yours and it's theirs, and because there's only thirty with all this money that is just kind of like whatever. It's a baseball team it's so easy for them to just do what they want as opposed to like trying as hard as they can. You know, they don't have to, they're not among like a sea of a thousand to really be the thing. Like they can just kind of exist and it'll all be fine. So if they don't want to focus on that, they don't have to focus on that. No, he's got a, I hope know, that's a, not a happening. 309 on, ERA on and a one, <laughs> yeah, they just win. turn the blind eye to that one and they pick, grab yeah. another stat and they just say, this is why we did it. Right. I mean, there's so many statistics out there. I think, that's the hard part, but I'm curious, and we'll move away from the Cubs here, about a couple guys, a couple pitchers that have been struggling this year, surprisingly, I think. The two names I think of are Alec Manoa and Sandy Alcantara. Oh, man. Are there statistics or metrics that you've looked at that point to, like, okay, this is what happened, or this pitch just isn't working, sure. and they haven't been able to make any kind of adjustments? And if they were going to make an adjustment, could they make it in season like this, or is it you know, a lost cause at this point because they've worked this new pitch in it's just not working. And hopeful right. for Manoa because I picked him up and he's on my team. Oh, no. No, it's not Manoa. Manoa's thanks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate so that. What I, Appreciate what I did, um, <laughs> you know, Among all the random things that we do, uh, one of the most fun ones I get to do these days is um, I have uh, how I structure my time. And this is also something that's completely separate from what we're talking about. But um, one of the things I really learned doing this is I've been, again, really fortunate that I can pretty much do this full time without taking any money from it. Um, but it's it's about how I structure my time and how do I make it the most efficient to do the most things that I want to do, right? And I think everybody doing something like this, you guys doing this podcast and stuff, this is fantastic that you're dedicating the time to do this, like going through those motions. And I'm mm-hmm. sure there were times when like you I were like, okay, going to dedicate this amount of time on it, right? And now you're like, okay, maybe I'll spend a little bit less time on that and you have better systems in place, right? So for me, I've been so fortunate to have this system of like, cool, I do my article at night. In the morning, I do a two-hour live stream. Um, and it's now on playback.tv slash PitcherList where I have our PitcherList community asking me fancy questions. So it's like my open office hours. I used to do like comments on our articles or answer a lot more on Twitter and all this kind of stuff. I realized, no, here's two hours every morning. If you want me, that's where you go. Right? And I'll answer yeah. anything you do. But it also allows me to get all my work done with like a study hall asking me to get my work done, right? Like right. all focused on me to do. So I do my SB streamers in the morning, then I do the morning plus pitch podcast then. And I also then watch video um, of a start that I then put on YouTube. And that's like, that, to me, the most fun thing I get to do. I get to just like skip through the video and be like, all right, this is this, this is that. I talk about sequencing. I, uh, I'm really lucky I get to talk to some clubs about like sequencing now. And it's the most fun thing. It's the most overlooked thing because you can't do data on it. And I'll tell you why. Um, if you had an ad break, exactly when I would say after this break. But uh, this is uh, this is the f- most fun thing for me, especially as a pitcher, and why I enjoyed it so much. It's a chess match. Everyone's always said that. But you feel like there should be a um, a kind of a textbook or like a mathematical equation to solve what you're supposed to throw, right? right Here's the right. problem. Guess what the model will say to throw after you throw a slider? Probably another one. Right. And if you miss it with that one, what will it say? Yeah, just throw another one. Yeah, I mean, it especially will say if you're just throw a slider the bias. entire time, right? <laughs> yeah. So so that's the problem is that you really can't do that. And actually how you're supposed to sequence is by judging the batter. 
Right. Uh, and judging the batter is not like not as easy as you think. Um, if he fouls the ball off, how does he foul it off? Is it fouling off backwards? Is it fouling off away? Was he late on that? How did he react? When he took a pitch away, did he lean at it? Did he was he surprised by it? Was he, you know, when he threw a first pitch fastball in the zone, is he swinging at it? Is it, is it called strike? Great. That means he's not looking for a fastball. That mm -hmm. means he's looking for a breaking ball. So you don't give him a breaking ball. You give him a fastball, right? How the batter reacts inside of an at-bat is everything. And there have been so many games when I'm the guy that shouts at the TV for all the other reasons. Like, it's not about success or not. It's about you should know this pitch is coming. Why didn't you, why did you swing at this thing? Or why didn't you swing at that thing? Right? Yeah. Like that's what I get so upset about because as a pitcher, it's, there is very much a rhyme and reason. It is not hard to pick up. I swear to you, it might be so intimidating to a uh, recognize pitches on the fly or um, understand what's good or bad. It really, it's like a limited thing. It's like four pitches. Just know that every guy is a fastball. And everyone guy has like at least one, if not two secondaries. And that's it really. And to, to recognize which one it is, it's just velocity. Slider, uh, sliders in the eighties, uh, curveballs in the seventies, fastballs in the nineties. There you go. You got it. And then you, then you play the game of like, okay, he did this, he did that. And then you get, it's so much fun. So, mm -hmm. um, that's a very, very long tangent, um, to say that, uh, it's really fun for me to do this thing in the morning and Alec Manoa, I watched his and I cannot tell you how disappointed I was in the Tigers no. in the first game. <laughs> <laughs> the first game it's gonna bounce just, back it was like the worst i i I, can't, <laughs> I can't tell you like there's a disappointment face i get i'm just like why why javier baez when it's an oo count it's an oo count where it's a it's a, like a slider out of the zone never should be swung at because Sweet. if it's a fastball you don't want to be swinging at the one over there down and away anyway and then if it's a slider that's way out of the zone, like what are you swinging at that one for? Why at 2-0? -oh? Like there are, there are things like this where it's just you are making the wrong decision. And mm -hmm. uh, it's actually better to also, as a batter, not swing through when you're beat um, early in the count. Just like check swing it or whatever. Because if you actually make contact, it will be an out. And like why do you want to get out on a 2-0 -oh count? You know, like just take 2-1. Yeah. It's still a good count for you. I see this all the time. And I'm just like shouting and yelling and everything. And I'm like texting who I know. I'm like, please tell, you know, <laughs> and like, yeah, we're upset, you know, that kind of thing. And it's, uh, so Alec Mano looks so bad um, against the athletics. I watched it against the Jays, so bad. Like, I'm not the get Jays, I'm sorry, the Padres. Alec Mano to me has too much to fix. It's the four seamer command. It's sinkers are not going inside. It was a problem they had at the end of last year. Not gonna be repeated. Slider, nice 10 whiffs and 31 pitches, still under 50% strike rate. That needs to be like a 60, 65% strike rate pitch. He has too much to fix. It's too inconsistent. It's very, very rare to all of a sudden have one tweak and there it goes like that. Sandy Alcantara is amazing. And I, I'm, I'm still in shock that it's a 4-7 ERA. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, the fact that he has, like, one bad blow up anywhere things don't go his way and then he goes, like, six shutout after is like, yeah. see? Like, he's amazing. The changeup got a lot worse hit earlier in the season. Um, it's much better now, better command of it, actually staying down an arm side. I legitimately think like Sandy Alcantara is still an amazing buy low right now. So, okay. Any, any All up right. and comers that uh, would help me yeah. win our fantasy league that I should add to my team, or maybe I already have them on my team. Any, any kind of, cause we're a very pitch heavy league. It's uh -huh. very valuable in our league. Yeah. Um, you pretty much need pitching in our league for sure. And so oh, our man. waiver wire is dry with the pitching, but if there's anyone out there as well okay so the first app. of all you should be reading the roundups and then there that's how you know i do yeah. the list every every monday which is the top 100 um starters that's why we're called pitcher list pitcherlist.com um, check it out yeah there it is oh man look at that plug amazing i <laughs> uh, i mean it, it's tough right now because everyone that is like interesting is likely rostered um like yeah, griffin yeah. canning sub 20 percent roster right now which is wild same with gavin williams but i imagine yours is not that case so like yeah gavin so williams is gone griffin canning is the quintessential streamer pitcher in our league he gets picked mm. up and dropped and dropped all yep. the time more than anybody else um, i i'm not surprised by that one uh chase still mm -hmm. said it's very interesting this week against the tigers um he just I, had an amazing amazing start with a new breaking ball sub he dropped its its velocity to get more movement on it really good command down and away on it brand new pitcher in my book um, for what he used to be and he gets the tigers and that's like yeah that's that's the good stuff. two guys that i picked up this year that i'm pretty high on and tell me if the, if i'm Go ahead. crazy on it but i i picked up uh bayo uh from boston oh, brian bayo yeah 
I, I've enjoyed his success recently. And then uh, Wu out of Seattle. I like oh, yeah. I like him as well. Are those are those solid? Well, because I named Brian. Yeah, of course. Um, Brian, no, yeah. I, no, it's uh, so so Bayo is a sinker changeup guy uh, where changeup is great. The sinker is surprisingly good for how much it's in the zone. Um, but it gets a lot of downward movement. It's really it's surprising to see whiffs, honestly, these days on sinkers down. And he actually can get them. So that's pretty cool. Four seamer and slider need help, though. And I do worry a little when I see a guy like Bayo who is sinker changeup as really his primary thing without anything else that's really helping that much. I mean, four seamer kind of does sometimes. Sometimes the slider does. But as you mentioned, it has been consistent. Mm. Um, so generally, I do like Bayo just avoid like the top tier matchups, but you should be fine with that. And I wouldn't really expect the slider to become a thing until maybe next year. He might actually be one that I do target because he could go 180 innings next year, especially if that slider gets better. Um, with I with Wu, sad news is that they're likely going to push him into the minors soon because he's pushing past his career. His innings right limit, now. right? Yeah, I saw. That. Yeah, so <laughs> I would have been. Tough I actually thing was, with rookie starters, right? Yeah, it's a common thing. Um, Yuri Perez, of course, had to go through it too. Uh, Yuri Perez is amazing. He is he is so good. I cannot express how good Yuri Perez is. Uh, oh my gosh. But uh, Brian Wu was really good too. Really amazing four seamer. There was a start where he had sinkers inside. Um, and you'll probably know this uh, from playing. Um, sinkers inside that start all over the plate and end off the plate are like the bane of existence for all batters. It is so difficult to resist those. And if you try to hit them, you have to step in the bucket that is like opening up your hips to then get the barrel inside far enough. Otherwise, it's going to be either foul balls or ground outs, and especially going to leave the batter upset with their hands after because it hurts so much. Um, and so if you see a high O swing on sinkers, that is, like, beautiful. Uh, Merrill Kelly's doing that, actually, right now, which is kind of wild. Um, um, but Zach Wheeler is, like, the king of this and why I've always been so high on him. Sandy Alcantara generally is pretty good at it, too. Um, and the reason why those guys can go seven innings is because they generate those quick outs jamming guys effectively. So Brian Wu did show that for a second and then disappear in his last learn. I'm like, well, that's stupid. Yeah. And uh, his slider isn't nearly as good as it needs to be. But the four seamer is a really, really good pitch. I expect that to still be a good pitch. So when he does start, I do like Brian Wu, too. All right. Watch out, Evan. Yeah, I'm going to give you a couple names here that I like uh, from my squad. Uh, and then we'll game. get you out of here. We'll get you out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no. This is, but this is, I'll tell, tell you guys right you. now, we do this for exactly this. Like, yeah. you can, okay. I got all We're the time a, in the world for you guys. Yeah. I love this. <laughs> giving everyone a taste of your office hours here. Uh, <laughs> Andrew Abbott, I'm hmm. like in love with this guy. Sure. I don't know how he gets so many strikeouts. He doesn't throw that hard, you know. To me, that's like, you know, how yeah. is this happening? And Bobby Miller, those are my two. Oh, my two man. rookies that I'm really high on, both of those guys. And then I will add that I picked up Domingo, uh, streamed him for the perfect game. But I'll just Did you really? Out there. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know what's the funniest thing is that for two straight years, I do my streamers, right? And I had streamed a no-hitter. Like, I had picked Spencer Turnbull, and then I had picked Reed yeah. Demers in those two games. And I actually had oh. Domingo Herman one spot above the streamer, but I couldn't because it was 21% rostered, and I do 20% or under. Oh, okay. And I would have okay. had Domingo for the third straight year. <laughs> Um, and he did not pitch well in that game. And I actually remember afterwards being like, this wasn't good. <laughs> and it was like, the A's. Pitched, and yeah, it was the A's, right. Yeah. And the next start, like, he wasn't good. I'm like, yeah. because he wasn't good. Um, Domingo Herman, despite being a garbage human, unfortunately, uh, yeah. is someone that has an amazing fa uh, curveball and uh, a uh, decent enough fastball and change. Oftentimes, I see a guy with an elite pitch. It's normally much worse with his other pitches. Th these aren't really that good but they are serviceable to really um, prop up that curveball. So that's fine uh, with uh, man. So it's really funny. Uh, I post on Reddit. Reddit was one of the major things. <coughs> I'm so sorry. I did that out again. I don't know. I'm coughing. That's human guys. <laughs> it's all that's good. what we do. Yeah, that's what we do. We're not perfect. Okay. I uh, Andrew Abbott and, and Bobby Miller have been like the most contentious thing on Reddit for me. I, I started with Reddit. Reddit was really the first place that I promoted. I was a Redditor since like 2010. 2009 and so like the second i had something i was like i want to share this with our baseball and our fantasy baseball and i uh, so i always post the list i've done there every uh, every time since 2015 every monday i post the list and uh this year they're always like there's always something there's always like some player that i got wrong apparently and uh, i understand why they're upset and i get it every single time they've been pushing i remember i had bobby miller above andrew abbott and i've actually always had that 
And this was like right after Abbott with a second time going double digit strikeouts while Bobby Miller had like his third or second bad start. And they were mm-hmm. like pitchforks galore. Um, and I will say to this day, Bobby Miller is a much better pitcher than Andrew Abbott. Uh, it's sinkers inside at 100. He does this. He does the Zach Wheeler and Alcantara thing at 100. Wow, okay. But they're um, still not as good as Alec Manoa. Okay, noted. it. Got it. Close. We were, we were, we were almost getting there. <laughs> I have not there. been paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> took me a moment to like hear that back three times to make sure you said that. I was like, yeah, that, okay, that's funny, son. Not my voice. Um, but uh, yeah, Bobby Miller, uh, in his last start, last two really, he decided, you know what, instead of trying to be perfect with the curveball and the slider, I'm just going to throw them in the zone. And they're great. They're really good inside the zone. He gets strikes with those it's game over. And then hopefully he can adjust then the slider that's in the zone a little bit out. And that is like a PLV darling, that pitch, obviously the 100 mile per hour sinkers are. Um, I think Bobby Miller is just going to be so good. And it's the Dodgers. And that's always a good defense behind them and winning ball club. Like Dodger rightus isn't a thing anymore, which is what I gave the term for like how every pitcher would go like five innings or they would have stint ILs and everything. It was just Dodger rightus. Bobby Miller mm-hmm. doesn't have that. They need it so badly. So I love him. Andrew Abbott confuses me so much. Uh, four seamer, is it actually good? It was in his last start. He actually commanded it well. Great in the uh, minors. Sweeper, of right, right. Uh, <laughs> sweeper was really well commanded down and away in his last start. And it was a brilliance of like pitch separation. Um, but that wasn't his pitch. It was curveballs before. So I, I feel like Andrew Abbott is is good and should be started. I'm not saying in any way. As I was contentious about Andrew Abbott, I had like 37. Everyone was like, he should be 25. I'm like, okay, guys. Um, but <laughs> it's, I, I still see Andrew Abbott as someone that is figuring out how he gets his success and is not consistent yet. So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious what we see. I just wish Cincinnati had a better camera angle so I can read that better. <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah, Andrew Abbott is, is good and you should absolutely be having him. I just don't think he is like this year's strider or that kind of thing. Gotcha. Okay. Well, if anyone is listening out there, uh, go ahead and give Pitcher List uh, a follow on Twitter. Go to the website. I mean, you're listening to this because you're, you're wanting fantasy baseball advice and you're getting it right here firsthand. Um, start your day off by going to PitcherList.com. Uh, Nick Pollock has been our guest today. It's been awesome to have you on. Very insightful. Learned a ton. Uh, definitely going to make some moves, I feel like, on my roster after this conversation. But uh, Nick, is there anything else you want to plug right now for our listeners? Well, as if you're listening right now, have you guys given them a review yet on iTunes or Spotify? Like, what are you doing? Yeah, uh, yeah, you yeah. Made all Five stars, smash, this. Of course, smash you it. love it. Subscribe. <laughs> I'm serious, though. It actually goes a long way for these guys who put a ton of time into it. Um, it's a small thing that you can do, and it makes a huge impact for them. So consider doing that if you haven't already. And they're super nice and amazing. Like, I can't thank you guys enough for, for bringing me on today. Hey, appreciate thanks, it, man. man. I really appreciate it. Thanks again for coming on, Nick. We appreciate your time. Oh, absolutely. This was a blast. All right. Thanks again to our guest, Nick Pollock. Again, you can find him on Twitter at PitcherList, or you can go to PitcherList.com. Mondays, he puts out the PitcherList. If you're a fantasy baseball player fan, check it out on Mondays. He said it's out usually around 6 p.m. for all the game start for the week. So great tool. That's been our show for today. For Dan, I'm Evan Bierman. You've been listening to the Domestic Draft Podcast. If you're listening on Spotify, don't forget to rate the show. You can find us on Twitter at Domestic Draft, on Instagram at Domestic Draft Podcast. Our website is DomesticDraft.com, and you can watch the show on YouTube. Just search up Domestic Draft and drop us a sub. Thanks again for listening. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.